Well, welcome to the Menlo Midweek Podcast, everybody. My name is Mark, and as you can see or hear, we have two guests with us today, Rochelle Summers. That's right. I'm back. And Phil Eubanks here. Just Phil. What's up, everybody? Just Phil. And we have a new setup for those that are watching. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of cool. It feels a little bit more intimate. Mm -hmm. It does. I wanted it not to feel, uh, for those that are listening, we're sitting around a desk, and I didn't want it to feel like an interview. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to feel more like a conversation, but I don't know. We'll see how it's going. It's great. I like it. But Memorial Day weekend, hopefully everyone was safe, had a fun time. Did yes. you two do anything fun over the weekend? Uh, my weekend was pretty chill. My okay. husband, Matt, was away. I so know, I was very I, jealous. Yeah, sorry that you were not there with him. <laughs> I had a retreat. <laughs> um, so I just laid low with the kids. Didn't go to church yesterday, but I'm all caught up on listening to the sermon. You mean? Mon- uh, excuse sun- me, on Sunday. Like, nobody yeah. went to church yesterday, I don't think. <laughs> but yeah, maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. So just laid low. It's yeah. great. Uh, yeah, pretty pretty low key weekend for us. Nothing nothing too crazy. Uh, Monday holidays are sort of a blessing and a curse in the life of a preacher. So even if it's a Monday holiday, I have to do a little bit of work because I still have to preach. Yeah. So, but yeah, took a half day as a family yesterday and hung out with some folks. So uh, it was good. We're okay. you know glad to be back at it. Today is going to be a about a fourteen hour day for me. Started about two hours ago. So okay. Uh, I was really more honestly mentally preparing for today. So, oh, why is today so long? Uh, we have like a we're working with a company called Clarity House, doing some long term strategic stuff for Menlo, which has been great. And so they're in for today. I had a meeting before this meeting or before this, and then uh, have a dinner afterwards tonight. So okay. like that, all just yeah, you know, it's a lot. It'll be that great. is a lot. Marathon Tuesday. Marathon Tuesday. That's what Monday holidays do in my life, though. This is exactly, I just know it's coming, so. I feel like that, it's such a blessing on the day, but then the the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday work week is just so brutal to do everything in those three days, so. I feel you. Not quite as much as your marathon, but I'm still kind of there. My triathlon is on Saturday. Nice. So I was up early swimming today. Got to do a few, Not try not to overtrain this week. My brain's like cramming as much things as you can, but I know that's not what you're supposed to do. Sure. Mm-hmm. So Good just trying, you, trying to swim, run, bike a little bit this week. Wow. Um, but I'm coming to the close of that. So Way to go, bro. Oh, so impressive. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. That's but great. Let's jump right in. So Phil, we're in <laughs> seasons, permission to feel. Mm-hmm talked about a few seasons so far and we are now in fall in our journey of seasons so what is fall how what is what are some signs people are experiencing that and what are some takeaways yeah i mean i think the one-to-one relationship between a season and uh the season of our life is not exact so Mm -hmm. uh, you know we should name that uh i do think though that for me i tried to take it from the lens of uh, fall is sort of a season that in many ways represents change. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think a lot of times in the way that we relate to or connect to God for a long time, you connect with God maybe one way. And then I think fall, uh, maybe it's circumstantial in your life. Maybe it kind of lags circumstances in your life, but you go, okay, I'm not sure uh, what to do different. Um, but what used to connect me with God, the kind of rhythms, habits, disciplines, it maybe even people, um, that just isn't working anymore. And mm-hmm. so I think some people, they let that um, be an avenue of drift where uh, they just kind of slowly pull back from their relationship with God. Uh, but I think if we're thoughtful, there's there's ways for us to reexamine and think maybe there's some things in the past that I've written off uh, as it relates to connecting with God that I should revisit. Um, and so we just talked about what does um, uh, some of that look like and that whether we want to admit it or not, when when seasons of change come in our life, we do trust something in those seasons of change and they become great revealers. I think seasons of change uh, will draw us to the something or the someone that we really do trust. So we know it should be God. We know it should be the Mm -hmm. body of Christ, the church. We know it should be healthy rhythms and practices, but it's like, yeah, but like Netflix is really waiting for me, you know, Mm -hmm. or like, oh, I I can really crush it at work and feel a level of satisfaction. I can really uh, ace that test. I can really get ready for that triathlon. And I think any good thing can become ultimate. And I think in seasons of change, Mm -hmm. it's very tempting to take good things in our life and make them ultimate, Mm -hmm. take bad and unhealthy things and just um, use them to numb out and cope in unhealthy ways as well. So Mm -hmm. that was a little bit of where we were this weekend. Mm -hmm. How can someone identify that they're in a season of fall? So 
someone that might just be like, man, I'm working towards this goal. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know who else in this table is going to do a triathlon pretty soon. So I know that you weren't talking to me just then. Sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just buried in work and, and trying to perform. Or man, I just really love my busy lifestyle. And I just, you know, it allows me to maybe subconsciously escape or consciously. Yep. So how can we identify and be present in there to say, you know, maybe this is trending towards unhealth? Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think um, the really sad reality is that most of us don't know mm. um, because we have not mm -hmm. like actually been tending to our soul. And mm -hmm. so that's the, I think a lot of us, we just sort of experience seasons and we're like, hey, the last few months have been really good. I don't know why. <laughs> And then it's like, these months are terrible. I don't know why. <laughs> and so I think some of it is just like taking personal inventory of, hey, is spending time with God right now in your life, um, does it feel like a chore or does it feel like a joy? Is it life giving or does it feel mm -hmm. life taking? Mm -hmm. uh, I think those are great questions to explore. If you have a community of people uh, that you share life with, asking them some of those same questions about their own life experience. I think Psalms, one of the reasons that we're praying through it is because um, these are people who uh, pondered, right? They like really spent time just considering their life. Uh, and I think we have no place to really patiently ponder today because we're all sort of like mm. frenetically freaking out instead. Mm. And so uh, it's a good question. Like, how do I know I'm in fall? I'm not sure we do without uh, stepping back and asking questions of ourselves. Shout out. There's a great book called um, the Deeply Formed Life, is that the name of it? Mm -hmm. Rich Velotis, I quoted mm -hmm. from it this weekend. It's a great book. And he uses an illustration in the book. Um, it might be in his opening section, maybe, on uh, the Titanic. And he talks about the movie Titanic and how um, even as the Titanic, like underneath, below decks, there was panic. It was really bad. People knew what was coming. But then on the, the deck of the Titanic, you had all these like very rich people that were just going along and normal, you know? And I think mm. uh, that really represents for a lot of us our faith if we're not careful in the season of fall, where on the surface, everything looks normal, you know, like you're mm -hmm. showing up to church and um, maybe you're showing up to life group and maybe even, you know, you're somebody that's like, I'm, I'm studying my Bible. But if you really looked sort of under the deck, you could feel that things were shifting and changing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think it's, it, it's doing some of that work. And if you've never done it before, that book may be a great resource mm -hmm. to help examine. So. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Rochelle? Yeah. I love that book. That's, that's great. a great book. Uh, great analogy as well. Um, I didn't write it. Rich Velotis did. Yeah, Rich did. <laughs> shout out, Rich. Uh, friend shout of the show. New York friends. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I. You talked a little bit about comfort and trying to find mm -hmm. change or uh, through comfort. And that sometimes when we are comfortable, um, we don't always know that we're experiencing this fall season or that we don't always know mm -hmm. um, that change could happen. And I was thinking about when, right before we moved here in 2019, Matt was going through a series of interviews with Menlo and I felt reassured in my soul that this was going to be part of God's calling in our life for us to move. I mean, we lived on Long Island 30 years, born and raised there forever, and we were very comfortable. I mean, my in-laws lived down the street. My parents were around. We had help with our kids. Uh, my son, Daniel, who's on the autism spectrum, had a great setup for school, and we had just bought a house, and everything felt pretty comfortable. And so to like think of this idea of moving when everything kind of seemed normal and easy for the most part, like was just crazy. Mm -hmm. Why would we take ourselves, take our children out of this sense of comfort? And I, for me personally, I had to pray or keep asking God, like, how do I take everything for granted that you've given us all these good things? And we were entering fall, right? Like s physically we we're in September mm -hmm. and, um, New York fall is much different than California falls or Bay area fall. And I just kept praying like, God, um, how do I take all this for granted? And I kept going back to the verses in Proverbs actually of saying, um, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding, seek his will and all you do. And I felt God asking me, do you trust me? Hmm. Do you trust me? And I was like, yes, I trust you in this bubble. I trust you here on Long Island in Corum and putting my son and my kids to school on the bus and with my family so close. And I feel like in seasons of fall, God wants to know, do you trust me? You know, mm -hmm. don't make an idol of the things 
that you're comfortable in. Don't make an idol of the things that come naturally to you. But do you trust me to take you further? Yeah, well, that reminds me of the text in Romans 1, right? That uh, sort of part of the brokenness that Paul's talking about, he talks about uh, you exchanged the truth of God for a lie. You worshiped the gift rather than the giver, right? Mm. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I resonate with that, with that a lot, right? It's easy for us uh, to take the things that God has given us and then we put them on the unshakable shelf of our life. And we say, well, God, I'll do whatever, but like those things can't change. Mm -hmm. And I think God would say, oh, uh, those things have just become me now, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a really, um, yeah, an apt observation that, um, you know, we talked a little bit about the must, God, you must do this. God, you must deliver yeah. this yeah. the right. week before. And this week, I may have talked about it, uh, just this idea of like, God, here are the unshakable ideas of uh, comfort, routine, performance, entitlement. Um, I'll, I'll do whatever you, I'll change whatever you want, God, as long as those things don't have to change. And the problem is that's like a pretty big portion of our heart and life. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I think um, my hunch is that there are some folks that um, even just the conversation about fall and feeling mm -hmm. like this principle of diminished returns, like I'm, I'm putting energy and effort into my pursuit of God and that energy and effort that used to bring all this joy, that used to bring mm -hmm. all this uh, connection, that used to bring all this um, inspiration and innovation in my life isn't doing that anymore. And that mm -hmm. may be an indication that uh, God's going, hey, it might be time to look differently at me. So Yeah. yeah. As you're talking, I kind of got an image of a, of a plant entering into fall. Okay. And it, it know. I don't know if a plant can know this or not. Part of me thinks plants are like super smart, actually, and like actually can can kind of have some foresight. Even though I've heard that's what separates animals from us is that animals <laughs> don't have a concept of the future and time. Okay. However, all the, as an aside, <laughs> um, but plants are prepping for winter. They're prepping to drop their leaves for mm -hmm. things to change for a season of uncomfortability, only to be produced either fruit or springtime, new life, new growth. And that, I don't know, it was just an, an interesting thing as you were talking. I was like, oh, I wonder if plants think about that as they're also entering into winter and then hopefully spring and summer. So Right, that as the leaves are falling mm -hmm. and spreading seeds, they're actually mm -hmm. producing life as they produce, as, as they're dying. There's life that comes mm -hmm. with death. And I think that's one of the most beautiful parts about autumn. Yeah, definitely. And... And if, if you, I wonder if you ask the question, uh, what has to die from your last season spiritually yep. so that there could be new birth in this and the next, right? Like that's, mm -hmm. that's probably not a question that we comfortably ask, yeah. but I think that's one of those questions that the mm -hmm. sort of fall season of change, right. we, we go, well, and, and I think I, I like worship music, um, and, but I, What's funny to me is the stuff that was like, it was the bops, like it was the stuff we all listened to. We've joked about this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that now you're like, oh my gosh, I've just worn it out. Like I can't go listen to that song anymore. Mm -hmm. Like it right. is just exhausting to hear it. Yeah. Um, and the songs of today are this that that way into the future. It's one of the reasons actually that I appreciate hymns because we somehow have not done that to them. Yeah. Part of it is because they're written for more than top 40 approach. But uh, I, I just think that there's something to that in our faith as well, that we feel like we're being, um, we feel like we're being disloyal. We feel, I, I'm not exactly sure what's underneath it, but we feel like, well, I, I have to always pursue God exactly the way I do in this season. Mm -hmm. um, and it just becomes duty. And uh, man, I just mm -hmm. don't think that God wants our pursuit of him to mm -hmm. be duty. Mm -hmm. uh, if I may, with that question of my, in mind of what do we have to die? Mm -hmm. Too. Um, one of my favorite books is Parker Palmer's Let Your Life Speak, Listening for the Voice of Vocation. And uh, he talks through seasons and how through his depression or just through depression in general, you can still find joy, you can still find hope. And um, in the section about autumn, he writes this, um, this hopeful notion that living is hidden within dying is surely enhanced by the visual glories of autumn. What artists would ever have painted a season of dying with such vi a vivid palette in nature if nature had not done it first? Does death possess a beauty that we who fear death, who find it ugly and obscene, cannot see? Who shall understand Autumn's testimony that death and elegance go hand in hand? Mm -hmm. And I think just this idea of dying, death, the, the leaves falling, dying, some, you know, 
killing something within ourselves, this idol, or something that's hindering us from finding God, will actually lead us to beauty in seeing who Jesus is in our everyday lives. On that, I mean, that principle exactly is what epitomizes the ministry of Jesus, right? Like yeah. we think about <laughs> yeah. the entire principle of salvation is mm -hmm. his death creating life, mm -hmm. resurrection, right? Yep. So uh, I think the seasons of fall for us are these invitations into that practically in our life. Yeah, it's good. It's a good quote. You also led us with three questions that framed your, just how we understand fall. Can mm -hmm. you run us through those questions and maybe how you got there? Uh, the questions like how I framed the whole talk? Um, questions or you you use three questions to yeah where is your shelter what yep. is your protection yep. and uh who is your salvation mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. uh i generally try to structure a talk by the text that i'm teaching and so mm -hmm. um i think for me it was just a matter of we had a pretty lengthy text and so how do i uh try to identify or pinpoint what is the question that the psalmist is answering mm -hmm. Uh, and so in fall, you could kind of feel, um, you know, Psalms are, are beautiful because they're, they're not trying to be, um, you know, in the New Testament, the punctuated or the, the grammar word is punctilier. Like, here's the thing, go do the thing. This is why Psalms are like, here's where I am. It's messy and hard. And you'll even see, um, you'll even see the shift of the psalmist in the midst of a specific psalm. Mm. And so I think you got to see some of that in Psalm 91 um, this week, but I think there's this, almost this uh, reminding to the psalmist um, themselves to say, uh, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He'll cover you with his pinions and under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. And so for me, I was, mm -hmm. I was trying to look at that section and say, okay, this idea of refuge, it's, it's pretty weighty in the text. Um, this idea of shelter, what, is that? Mm -hmm. what does that mean for us? And underneath that core idea that we all have these things, we all have a shelter, we all have something that we think is protecting us, we all have something that we think is saving us. Um, how do we assess whether or not that's God? And I think this provides an opportunity to say, well, this is what it sounds like if it's God. <laughs> What does it sound like in your head and art? Mm. Um, and and we all have other things competing with that, right? Mm -hmm. We all have stuff mm -hmm. that we go, yeah, that's not really God for me. You know, my shelter is uh, my status on social media. My shelter is my bank account. My shelter is a perfect looking family. My shelter is, and I think that list, um, when we compare it against this one, we go, oh, that shelter is actually not going to help you. That shelter is going to fall apart. And mm -hmm. usually in the fall is when it shows signs that it's mm -hmm. not enough. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of the hope of the text was to just try to go, hey, the psalmist is answering the question, if your shelter is God, this is what it sounds like. Uh, if your protection is God, this is what it sounds like. If your salvation is God, this is what it sounds like. And then I tried to take the uh, salvation component and ultimately answer the question that the psalmist couldn't, which is the gospel message of Jesus is our salvation. The psalmist would have understood some version of the Messiah, uh, but it was forward looking. It was mm -hmm. yet to come. So, hmm. I, I try to gatekeep Psalm 91, to be honest. That's mine. Um, no one else is allowed to read it. And that's <laughs> always how I felt about it growing up. So when we- Interesting. Yeah. When we um, were planning out the series, I saw that this was potentially one of the texts for this. I was like, I hope we don't use it. Because it's so good, and it's written just for me. <laughs> sure, yeah. No one else can know this. No one else. Yep, this one is mine. It sure. should be Mark Psalm. That's how we should refer to it from now on. Mm -hmm. Say more on that. It is a psalm that I would run to when there was times of trouble or hardship or trauma growing up, and it was one of those things where I just found one night when I just needed something, and I reached for my Bible, and I just literally opened it up, and I landed on that one, mm. and I just stuck there for mm -hmm. years. And whenever I would, you know, whenever I would need it, it would be there for me. And it's just a, a try. It can be so many things. Mm -hmm. It can be comforting. It can be inspiring. It can be sheltering or almost weaponized or like, like rah rah kind of. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, it was just, it's mine. Dibs. <laughs> Dibs. <laughs> That's exactly how scripture works. Mm -hmm. yes, I'm going to exactly. put it in my Bible. I'm going to write in parentheses. Yeah. This one's Mark's. Yeah. I'll write Mark. that for you. Yeah. Yep. Skip to 92. 
<laughs> skip to 90. This is not for you. Yeah. This is not yep. for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah, well, hopefully I didn't ruin it for you. No, oh, if anything, um, it was just a great take. <laughs> a little different than how I No, I'm just kidding. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, where do we go from here, Phil? Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to be... Um, we're going to be spending some time th- this weekend, this upcoming weekend, uh, talking about winter, uh, which is the hardest one, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's mm-hmm. when it feels like spring is never coming. And um, I think the thing that's really hard, um, I think the thing that's really hard about winter is the way we relate to it. Um, it, it I'm going to talk about how in California, like a lot of people live in California because they don't want to experience winter mm-hmm. uh, or they want winter to be something they choose to experience. So like we drive yep. to Tahoe mm-hmm. and then we drive out of it, but it's like a novelty. Mm-hmm. It's escapable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the inescapable reality of the impending winter of your spiritual life, mm-hmm. that feels really heavy and hard. And I think in the Valley, uh, we also, Silicon Valley like has this really unique idea that we can avoid all winters, right? Mm-hmm. So, What's the Uh, way that we can mm -hmm. grow our way so that we avoid a recession? What's the way that everything can always be up and to the right? What's the way that I can constantly be upgrading? What's the pill I can take? What's the upgrade I can experience? What's the uh, path I can be on that avoids pain? And um, I just think that in our relationship with God, that doesn't exist, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. um, if if the principle that we broke down in fall was changed, the principle that we're going to break down in winter is fear. And uh, I think fear drives a lot of really bad decisions. Um, and w- one of the things that I'll talk about um, at some point in the message this upcoming weekend that I think is really important is that every one of these seasons, uh, the way we experience that season is really predicated on how we prepared to experience that season. And in Colorado, the thing that was... Uh, like an unshakable reality. You always respected this if you were smart and didn't want to pay for a lot of money later was you turned off and blew out your sprinklers Mm -hmm. before the first freeze. Hmm. Um, And so you just saw, like there was whole industries of people that this is what they did. What does blowing out mean? uh, So all your sprinkler systems, they have all these lines that go through your yard and stuff. And so you have these junction boxes where you bring a, uh, like an air compressor and you connect that air compressor yep, yep. to it and blow any water out that's there and then close it off so that that water sitting in those lines doesn't freeze, expand, and damage your uh, mm-hmm. sprinkler lines. And so um, I-, I think if you don't do that, you will not know during winter. Mm-hmm. You won't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could have lots of damage happening in the walls of your house. You could have lots of damage happening underneath the ground in your mm-hmm. yard. It's actually spring when you find out you weren't prepared for winter. And I think that principle is so true for us that mm-hmm. you'll see people where they get to the other side of winter and all of a sudden the the work that could have been true of them if they were like really experiencing God in each season, um, all of a sudden it becomes like this, uh-oh, I wasn't prepared for this. And I think there are seasons of our life oftentimes um, uh, that co- coincide with big life changes uh, that are big, big revealers of that. So you, you would like, I remember I was, uh, leaving on a bike ride or a run or something and our neighbor just one to the left, uh, he had, um, not done this. <laughs> Clearly he had not blown out his sprinklers and it was one of our first warm days. And I mean, literally it was just gushing water, Oh my goodness! gushing water out the side of his house. I mean, I have no idea how much it cost to fix, but I texted him and I said, Hey man, just so you know, this is what's happening. And yeah. I didn't say, because you didn't do what you're supposed to do, even sure. though you've lived here longer than me. What are you thinking? <laughs> um, and I came and he was like, cool, man, I got it. And I came back from my run and it was still going on. Like that, there was such an inattention to that. And I have no idea. I'm sure that there were very good reasons why you waited. Uh, but I just think like how true of that do we often live in our own lives where uh, we have lived inattentive to preparing for the season that we're in and mm-hmm. we can live frustrated that we didn't prepare for the last season mm-hmm. or we can say, okay, the lesson I need to learn is how do I prepare for the next one? Mm-hmm. You know, how do I, how do I make sure um, that I'm connecting with God in a way that is preparatory for what mm-hmm. I can't see coming yet? Mm-hmm. So it's good. Yeah. We keep circling back to how each season informs the next season. Mm-hmm. And if we kind of drill down on fall, it's just really trying to identify and name that season. So yeah, seems like the more that we can be attentive and aware of our season that we're in, approach it, how that season, how, how we best can in that season, that will not only help us then, but also lead into change. Well, and I told you I had a hard stop in five minutes. I actually mm-hmm. got a text. I have one probably more like 10 minutes. Um, okay. But I think uh, the other... Uh, 
the other thing that I hope it would happen is I alluded at the end of this to the way that in seasons of change for us culturally, we run to what we trust most. And uh, over the last few years, that's been politics. Mm -hmm. And I think some of this is just uh, is like just acknowledging what didn't work. And so I hope that for followers of Jesus, we would understand that there's two kingdoms we live in simultaneously. There's the kingdoms of this world that we can see and experience, mm -hmm. and there's the kingdom of, of heaven. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think if we are if we have not learned the lesson <laughs> that politics uh, cannot solve kingdom of heaven problems, like that, we should work for the good of all people. We should be involved. We should have a, a view into that. We should have a voice for that. We should vote um, as an opportunity that we have in our moment and culture. Uh, but I think 20, 2020 was a mess on a million different levels. And uh, I just think for us to go, let's not, the next time we feel unease, the next time we enter into this, uh, let's not make the same foolish mm -hmm. decisions again. And, and I can point back to seasons of change in my life spiritually where I pulled back from key relationships where uh, healthy rhythms in my life, I didn't replace them with others. I just stopped doing them. Um, and then I found myself in the middle of winter and it was way more difficult to kind of mm -hmm. catch up. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you see this all the time, right? Yep. People in uh, spring, there's all this stuff after the first of the year where it's like, hey guys, swimsuit season's just around the corner. Better go get in shape. And you're just like, oh, no, no, no. Like, it would be so much easier mm -hmm. if we just regularly found ways to stay connected with God mm -hmm. from season to season. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that begs the question of like, where is your foundation? What are, What is the foundation of mm -hmm. your life? What is the foundation mm -hmm. of your soul? Um, is it, you know, constantly catching up or is it being deeply rooted in Jesus, deeply rooted in things, uh, the fruits of the spirit? Um, or are we just living in this moment and not prepared regularly? Yeah. Well, I think the, mm -hmm. the idea of, um, Understanding that God can go ahead of us, right? That I think about that text often in James. Um, if the Lord wills, we'll go do and do this and do that. But we're we're a dew, we're a morning vapor. We're here today. We're gone today in the grand scheme of eternity. Um, but it, to your point, it, it doesn't mean that we are not anticipating and living with the future in mind. Mm -hmm. It just means that we're not presuming for it. I think there's a difference between preparing for it and presuming for it. Mm. And uh, mm. and so I think what is the what is the difference look like? We spend a lot of time presuming on the future. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, I think being able to say what does it look like to be present with the Lord and with his people today uh, in preparation for a future I don't yet know. Yeah. Mm. I I know we also talked about um, feeling and it's okay to feel. I actually wore a shirt today that says feel the feels because feel I Love really it. believe mm -hmm. in that. Um, and I think it's okay when we're going through seasons of, you know, um, deprivation or even good times. You want to feel those feelings. You want to embrace, well, what is God teaching me right now? But you never want to get stuck. You don't want to get stuck on the mountaintop and you don't want to get stuck in the valley. And so I think that's the beautiful part of forming good community is being a voice of mm. reason and listening for the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit to guide, like how do, here I am in this deep, dark valley, here I am in this deep, dark hole, how can I get out? And if you can't mm. do it alone, hopefully you have good people around, or if yeah. you're on having this mountaintop experience, well, at some point you're going to come down. Um, so I think community is so important um, to moving forward, living in the present, but also moving forward. Yeah. yeah. I, th I do think that community is one of those things that can shift. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes it can mm -hmm. feel disloyal, but, um, you know, Jesus sets a, a great framework for us of understanding that there are these sort of tiers of relationships and it's okay if in a season you say, hey, this person and I are uh, connecting or this smaller group and I are connecting more meaningfully. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't mean you're not friends with other people. It just means right. that right. Uh, you right. understand the value, the, the, the reciprocal relational value uh, with a subgroup of people. And I think sometimes in seasons, some of those deepest friendships are what get us through. And, um, you know, I'll talk about it some this upcoming weekend, but uh, 2020 for me was, you know, ministry's hard normally. And then you add 2020 to that. And uh, we were very committed in Colorado to be a ch church that was Jesus first um, with politics through that lens rather than the other way around. And it was really messy and really hard. And I can tell like, for sure, they would easily fit on one hand, the number of friends that like legit got me through that season. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were in my friend group before, but they just became like what I call kind of your 2am friends. Like, 
Mm-hmm. They're not going to ask questions. What do you need? I'm here to help. And mm-hmm. so uh, I think knowing where you, that reservoir of friends is is mm-hmm. really important. And if you don't have it, the time when we talk about preparation, the time to prepare for crisis relationally is right now. And uh, if you're like, well, I'll, I'll go make those relationships when I need them. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you got to do it right now. And if you're in the midst of crisis and you don't have those, like we want to help. We want to provide mm-hmm. a path of relationship and connection. I'm just telling you, it is going to be much more difficult than if you had been developing and cultivating relationships the whole time. Definitely. Well, Phil, thanks so much. Thanks so much for being here. We're excited for next week with Winter. Rochelle, thank you as well. Thanks for having me. And if you need anything this week, if you want to talk through any of this more, you can text our team 650-600-0402. I'd love to chat with you. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you soon. See ya.